Hello, I'm Merle Mullen. We're sitting in the Under the Garden showroom at our home in Brentwood in Los Angeles um, that my husband Peter built 30 years ago to house what he thought would be his collection of cars. He quickly outgrew that and so now we keep here many cars that we drive on a regular basis uh, in our museum in Oxnard, California. We keep uh, mostly French cars. Here we have an eclectic array of English, German, and French cars. I was 15 and a half years old. Uh, my secondary school was 14 miles from our home, our family home in Westwood, California. So my mother couldn't wait until I got a car. I actually drove on a learner's permit for six months until I turned 16. I drove to school every day. That first car was a special edition Ford Fairlane convertible, which my mother picked out as a surprise for me, which I did not like because it was all decked out in gold trim. And I thought it was too flashy to take to high school. My husband, <laughs> In self-defense, I became very interested. He always says, I have overhearing rights. So since so much of his life, such a big part of Peter's life has been cars, I've learned by osmosis and by association. I would seek out a very functional, a pretty but functional car for my everyday driving, something I could take to the flower market or the farmer's market, like the station wagon, a state wagon that I, that I drive for my everyday car. But to buy a new car, a, a new old car, I would look for a car with a story, with a great story. Uh, let me introduce you to some of my friends who are currently residing in our under the garden car showroom. And these are friends who come along on rides through the city, especially in this pandemic year when there's been so little traffic. It's been a joy to run around the, city, the West Los Angeles part of the city in, in them. This is a post-war 1969 DS21 Usine um, Citroën. It's uh, our newest restoration and it has a, a, a beautiful convertible top. It's a manual transmission but with no clutch. So the, you ha it's, it's quite complicated to drive it but I do love to to step on it when I go over all the local speed bumps because the hydraulics were so sophisticated in these cars. They were the apex of technology when they were built. And this car has a, a very good history. It was voted one of the most important cars of, of the 100 best cars in the world by Automobile Magazine. It was fifth. And I love driving this car around. This is a car I love to drive. It's a 1964 E-Type Jag, and um, it's very sleek. I took it recently on a, on a rally from Beverly Hills to San Ynez Valley, and then Mon on to Montecito and back, and it performs beautifully. It purrs like the cat that it is. This is a 1957 300 SL Mercedes, this is a car that I love to take on rallies. It's a workhorse. It's beautiful, but it's also a workhorse. It's very reliable. It's very fast. I drove this on the It's All About the Girls rally four years ago in the Napa Valley. This is a Peugeot Darl mat. Peter sought to find the perfect Darl mat for 15 years, and he never quite found the one he wanted. When he was lucky enough to acquire many cars from the Schlumpf collection, 
he found this among them. And out of all the 60 cars he was able to purchase that were quite in need of restoration, or unrestored cars, I should say, this is the one of two that he restored. And uh, it's not an easy car to drive. I'm sharing it with you here. I brought it here to our showroom just for this event so we could feature it. But if you want to see it in person, visit the Mullen Automotive Museum where it's right up in front and on a wonderful exhibit of the finest cars from the top carrossiers in France. This is a, a wonderful story. I said earlier that I love cars with stories. Uh, this had been my car at one time when I was 17 years old and Peter surprised me with it. It's a 1957 Thunderbird um, and he surprised me with it on our first anniversary. Had it restored and had it delivered to a hotel where we were celebrating our anniversary and when the valet brought it to me I said oh this is beautiful this is not my car though I used to have a car just like this and then Peter said I guess you better get in it and drive it home then and I've enjoyed driving it a lot I took it to Provence on a rally it got a lot of attention uh, people French people didn't quite know what it was but they were very curious about it Americans who are over the age of 40 would know this car very well it's there aren't many left and it's one of the few American cars on in the collection of the Museum of Modern Art. This is a Type 46 Bugatti. Uh, it was found in Greece. It belonged to a very famous actress named Melina Mercury, a Greek actress. And it was quite in need of restoration. When Peter first showed it to me, he said, isn't it beautiful? I said, it will be beautiful. It was really quite battered and beaten and black. And he said, it will be beautiful because you're going to be the restorer of this. Not physically, but by all the choices. So I chose this uh, two-tone two, two burnt orange shade because I thought this is a really fun car. And Peter let me do the interiors in a woven leather fabricated in the style of Bottega Veneta, the great Italian leather maker. On the door were the initials in Greek of Melina Mercury, MM. Since I'm MM, they are now replaced with MMM, Merle May Mullen, as a surprise. It also has a rumple seat what they call a mother-in-law seat, and a golf bag door. Because where would you put your golf clubs if you were driving in this cute little car? This is a 1931 Type 49 Bugatti. Of course, we try to keep one or two Bugattis because Bugattis are the hallmark of Peter's car passion. So, and this was essentially a touring car, quite early, but a touring car, not destined for the racetrack. And it it's, it's a quite a comfortable car, four doors, and you could just see someone driving around in this in the countryside in the 30s, wearing, of course, a beautiful hat and a flowing long dress. Peter and I have been lucky enough to have many tapestries created by a local Los Angeles artist, Keith Collins. Many car people know him, and here he featured what is really Peter's favorite car, which is a 1938 teardrop table lago, a French car that's a thing of beauty. As Peter says, this car has no bad angles. And this appears to be a painting, but actually it's made of thousands of pieces of carpet, from rolls of carpet that are pieced together like a mosaic. And um, if you want to see this car in person, it resides now at the Mullen Automotive Museum in, in the current exhibit. You'll see many other versions of Keith Collins' work throughout this car showroom and small vignettes, sections of cars that are so real when you look at them from afar 
and close up, if you take a close up, you'll see how they're pieced together with the most amazing colors, very much like the French pontalism, where you step back and all the colors blend in to the shading and the chiaroscuro of the, of the work. About 15 years ago, we were told about these sawhorses that were from the original Bugatti factory and the, the vise, the original vise. So we weren't going to be doing the body work. And for that reason, we decided to turn them upside down, put on the, have embroidered on here the Ettore Bugatti logo and use them as bar stools. My favorite car resides at the moment in a wonderful exhibit at the Oxnard Mullen Automotive Museum. It's a 165, type 165, red Delahaye um, Cabriolet. It's um, a 1938 design, beautiful swooping fenders by Fagoni and Filoski, and won the world's, the first prize in the World's Fair of 1939 in, in New York. Since 2011, I have been part of a team of four car women, all of whom enjoy the pleasures of their husband's passion for cars. And together, we have created a, a, a biann biennial women's car rally. We've gone to Tuscany twice, to Puglia once, to the Napa Valley, and to Provence in France. And next year, we will be going to Andermatt, Switzerland, using that as our base. There are 70 women driving 35 collector cars from about six or seven countries. And most of those women have returned continually. We still have about 80% are the original participants. Uh, in self-defense, <laughs> the four women who became the unwitting organizers were at uh, a pre-dinner at the Quail for the Quail event in 2010. And while all the men were nose to nose, we women got together and said, we, need, we should have our own event. And we weren't sure anyone would want to come and we still have the same following and the same, pretty much the same group of women. I'd say that principally the car world has been a man's passion and the expression of a man's passion. And now more women are getting involved. And I think that, uh, I think taking the reins, uh, our little group taking the reins uh, to start It's All About the Girls Rally, uh, was a very good step forward. I noticed a lot of the women who come on that rally are more proactive in the, their husband's world of cars, and several of those women are car collectors in their own rights. I think it's happening that women are being more embraced in the car world, and um, they're not uh, thought of as just uh, a, a navigator or co-pilot. Thank you very much for joining me in our underground showroom. It's been fun to share the cars with you. I hope you'll go to the museum and see the, the beautiful examples we have there.